This resulted in the displacement of all the Christian nations, their extermination or forced assimilation. I am not going to tolerate any more Christians in Turkey, Ministry of Foreign Affairs Enver Pasha declared. The Turks began a plan of genocide towards the Assyrians. There were increasing tensions on the Russian borders with Turkey and Iran. The Russian government had started negotiations with Patriarch Marshimun for Assyrian assistance in case of Russian war with Turkey. The Patriarch had promised a 40,000 man army. The Turks soon reacted by provoking the massacre of the Assyrians by the Kurds. The situation became critical. If immediate action wasn't taken, the mass of the Assyrian population would have been wiped out, as was reported by the Russian consul to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in the year 1908. In August of 1914, Germany declared war on Russia. And it was clear that Turkey, as Germany's ally, would enter the war shortly after. The Russians again had activated negotiations with the Marshall. Turkey, in return, declared the conscription of Assyrians into the Turkish army. Many Assyrians were now leaving for Russia and Persia. The Turkish government had concentrated its forces on the Russian border and started to arm the Kurds, provoking them against their Christian neighbors. On October 29, 1914, a Turkish and German fleet entered Russian territorial waters. A Russian gunboat was sunk in Odessa, Sevastopol, and other cities were bombarded. That was an actual declaration of war from the Turks. Active warfare on the land and sea had begun. The Russian command had initiated contact with the Patriarch, calling Assyrians to revolt against the Turks. Outnumbered Assyrians were already fighting Turks and Kurds, who were pressing the Assyrians to the mountains, far from the Russian-Turkish front line. The Patriarch was asking for weapons and ammunition from the Russians. The Turks, in return, imprisoned the Patriarch's brother and family. Your brother will stay alive if Assyrians will stop negotiations with Russians and keep quiet, Turkish authorities declared. The Patriarch replied, I am the leader of my people. I can't betray the nation for one person, even if he is my brother. Hormuz was executed together with the other members of the Patriarch's family. weapons that Russians promised didn't come. Turkish forces pushed Assyrians high up into the mountains, and the whole nation was on the verge of extermination. The Patriarch wrote letter after letter to the Russian High Command. I am informing you that for more than a month already my people have been fighting in the mountains against Kurdish and Turkish forces. Turks have occupied our villages and burned them all. The Assyrians have fled into the mountains and are dying from starvation. The ammunition has run out. We are surrounded by enemies. Our situation is desperate and hopeless. I am begging you to send troops here in the name of Christ. Finally, 400 Cossacks were sent from Persia, but they were ambushed and wiped out by the Kurds. There was no help for the Assyrians to rely on. In this critical moment, the Patriarch decided to accept the Russians' offer to fight the Turks towards Persia, towards the Russian army. That heroic journey of several hundred thousand Assyrians, women and children, and continuous warfare on the snowy mountains lasted a whole month. Countless numbers of them failed to get through. On September 15, 1915, the Assyrians joined up with the Russians in the valley of Lake Ormia. The Russian High Command expressed its admiration for the Assyrians. In 
In December 1915, the Patriarch was invited to the capital of Georgia, Tbilisi, to meet with the Emperor's brother, Grand Prince Nikolai Nikolaevich, chief of the Russian military mission in the Caucasus. Mar Shimun was given a personal train, and he left for the meeting. It was a long way across Armenia and Georgia. Every place the train passed, the Patriarch was saluted by masses of people. The whole world was decorated by flags and ribbons. The Grand Prince decorated the Patriarch with a medal and declared the Assyrians as official allies. They organized Assyrian battalions within the Russian army and he promised not to pull out troops from Persia. The Patriarch exchanged telegrams with the Russian Emperor. By 1917, Turkey was clearly losing the war and was on the edge of capitulation. In the preliminary agreement between the Russian allies, France, England, and the United States, Russia was supposed to receive the territory of Turkish Armenia. The Van region, motherland of the mountain Assyrians, and also Constantinople with its bays. By then, the Russian Revolution came about, and the Russian army on the south started to disintegrate. Soon, the army had turned into a gang of bandits and marauders fleeing home to Russia. After the Socialist Revolution in December 1917, Russians had made a truce with the Germans, and all military actions had ceased. As the Turks gained time to recover, they readjusted their positions and prepared to take Iran's Azerbaijan and the Caucasus. Russian troops then hurriedly withdrew from Persia. Viktor Shklovsky was an eyewitness to these events. His dates and facts may be slightly off, but his images are very vivid. The Russian troops disappeared like water through sand, he wrote. The Russians have gone. They have left a lot of weapons. The Syrians and Armenians armed themselves and started to collect weapons from Persians. They had old scores to settle. Assyrians were walking in trousers sewn from pieces of calico. Persian women were frightened and frightened their children with tales of the Assyrians. The Assyrians had covered the Russian retreat and were left alone once again. 30,000 rifles were collected from the Persians. Then Sinko, the Kurdish Khan, said to Marshimun, Come to me. I want to give up weapons too. The Patriarch took 300 men with him, got into a chariot, and went to the mountains where Khan Sinko lived. The convoy drove up into the Khan's yard, and the Patriarch walked into the house. The Kurds got up on the roofs with rifles. The Syrians asked the Kurds, why are you climbing on the roofs? We are afraid of you, the Kurds replied. But what are the guns for? The Kurds were silent. Mar Shimun came out onto the doorsteps. He looked gloomy. The office instructor charged, Mount! Kurds fired at once like bells ringing, and then again and again, then a machine gun. Only a few survived. One of them was Lazar Zervandov, who afterwards found himself sitting on a street corner on Nevsky Prospect, and who also disappeared with the others in Stalin's repressions. It wasn't known then that the murder of the Patriarch was provoked by the Iranian government who didn't wish to tolerate armed Assyrians in Persia. Used by the Russians, the English, and others in their political games, they again were alone in hostile surroundings. Viktor Shklovsky remembered as an eyewitness, the Kurds murdered the Patriarch, a man of medium height wearing a turban fez and cassock with an old cross. 
from the fourth century. He had a ruddy complexion and his eyes were childlike. White teeth and gray hair at just 38.